Thank you so much, Mally, and I'm delighted that you're joining us as moderator for OTF Connects this year. Hello, everyone, and welcome to OTF Connects. I would like to thank each of you for giving of your own time to join us tonight. It's wonderful, as Mally mentioned, to have such great representation from across the province, and it's always great to have new participants joining us. So welcome, everyone. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome Andrew Boronsky, who will be facilitating tonight's webinar, an introduction to Google Drive, Docs, and Slides. Andrew has facilitated numerous webinars for OTF Connects over the last three years. He always comes with such enthusiasm. He brings a wealth of knowledge and many, many useful ideas and strategies to share. So I'm excited about tonight's session, and welcome, Andrew. I'll now pass the mic over to you. Thank you, Surya. As always, you're far too kind. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, you've had a couple welcomes already, but let me pass another one along. Uh, I'm really excited to sit down and take you through an intro to Google Apps for Education here. I've been using it probably for Google Apps for Education itself for a couple years now. Uh, with my school board, and I was an avid Google user before that. So uh, I'm really excited about it, and I love talking about it, so I get a chance to geek out with all of you tonight. Uh, I'm just going to jump ahead with the slides here. Uh, so specifically tonight, there's a, a ton of applications within the Google Apps for Education domain, but very specifically tonight, we'll be looking at an intro to Google Drive, Docs, and Slides. Uh, a little bit about myself. So I'm a secondary school teacher. I've worked in the Features Forum Project, and I teach in Kitchener, Ontario. So with the Wilder Region District School Board, I really love using technology in my classroom, uh, looking at different ways to make learning better for my students and also make myself, my life easier and really kind of take the next steps. And uh, I also have a chance to work with some tech startups out here in Kitchener-Waterloo in the educational space. And I had the pleasure of also running a, a TEDx event, which I highly recommend people taking on. It's a really good experience. All right, so we're looking at Google Apps for Education tonight. There are a number of things that fall under the Google Apps for Education domain. And I think based on the description, I'm guessing most of you come from school boards that have Google Apps for Education. If you don't, that's fine. You can still take a lot out of this presentation, but there will be a few things that are geared specifically towards that. And it's important to understand that while they look very similar, Google Apps for Education or the GAF domain is different from having a regular Google Apps for Education, uh, sorry, a regular Google Apps account. They might look the same. You can have a personal account, but there's some extra features that come along with a GAF domain that's kind of tied to your school board itself. So as we're looking for that, you can see the icons on the screen there, and there are things like Google Calendar, Google Docs, Drive, uh, Google Sheets, which is very similar to Excel, Gmail, and Slides, which we'll be talking about tonight, too. Now, the first thing that you really need to understand when you're talking about Google Apps for Education is this idea of living in the cloud. And uh, it's becoming more and more popular, but it's still a mind shift for people. If you're already familiar with this space, uh, please bear with me. Um, but it's really important to understand this distinction of what it means to be in the cloud. So basically what the real shift we're looking at is, is that when you're working on something, be it whatever kind of file type you're looking at or in the storage space, it's no longer tied to a physical thing. Uh, we're very used to, historically with computers, to having a file that's either tied to the hard drive of your computer or on a USB stick you carry around with you, and that's where the file lives. Being in the cloud, that's not no longer where it stays. Uh, basically, you're working through an internet connection, and it's stored on a server somewhere away from your computer, and the device you're using is really irrelevant. So when you're talking about cloud-based work, um, if you store something there or you're working on something like a Google Doc or a Google Slide within Drive, it doesn't matter what device you're on, as long as it's tied to your personal account. So if you're on your phone or on a tablet, on a laptop that you own at home or a desktop at home, or you go in later and log into a computer at work or in the office, your files are always there for you. You just log into your account and you have access to them. Uh, I personally could not love the cloud anymore. It's made my life so easier. I remember collaborating as a university student uh, and doing group work and having to constantly email a file back and forth between people. So if we were like, doing a presentation in class for university, uh, we'd have our PowerPoint slides together and I would do some work and then I'd email it to another person. We'd have to do their piece and then email them back to the third person. They would have to do their piece. And then we'd realize by the time we got to the fourth person, We'd already overlapped some work. People were kind of messing things up. We weren't sure who was where. Uh, living in the cloud really kind of takes care of that space. You can have now have one file that you're sharing amongst multiple people. It's live. You can have multiple people working on it at the same time, see what they're doing. 
It's also great as a storage space. I don't know if you've ever had a computer crash on you and you've lost hard drive or photos that were really important to you or files that you've been building and lesson plans you've been using for years, um, or you have a USB and you misplace it. Um, it's a really painful thing to go through. Uh, living in the cloud, having your files stored there takes that care, uh, care of that for you again. It doesn't matter if your computer crashes. Um, you don't lose the file or the work you were working on or those files forever. So uh, I love the cloud. And when we're talking with Google Glass for Education, you really need to understand that everything we're talking about is living in that cloud space for you. It's not tied to your physical device anymore. All right, so the basics. Uh, like I said, we're looking at Google Drive tonight, uh, Google Docs, and Slides. Uh, I'm going to start off with Drive. Just a little kind of basics here for the workflow, my plan for the night. Uh, I highly recommend questions. I'm happy to take them at any point. But my plan, I've kind of chunked this session down into four pieces. So I'm going to start off going through some slides with a variety of screenshots, uh, looking at what Google Drive looks like, how it works. Uh, so I'm going to take you through the basics there, and you'll be able to see it on the screen through some screenshots and some text and talking through it. Uh, then I've created a video for all of you to watch. So each video tonight is going to be about seven to nine minutes long. And so after kind of listening to me and talking about it, you'll actually be able to see it in action. You'll be able to watch the video, see what it looks like to actually do it. Um, and then from there, we're going to come back and I've built in about five minutes for everybody to kind of just go off and play on their own. So you can see it in action, go and try it out yourself, and then come back and have another few minutes to take any questions you might have. So we can troubleshoot as we go together. So please feel free to throw questions in the chat at any time. But um, I would also recommend maybe just bear with me for a little bit. I might cover down your question as we're working through the presentation um, before we get to that space. You'll have multiple chances to look at it. And again, I'm happy to work with any of you and troubleshoot as we go through. So looking forward to this. We're going to start off with the basics here of Google Drive. Okay, so the very first thing, and again, I'm not sure where everyone is in the workspace here and how familiar they are with it, is basically getting into your Google account. Uh, to use Google Apps for Education uh, or just Google Apps themselves, you need to be logged into your account. Um, if you have GAF within your school board, you'll have a unique email address, and every board's kind of got their own way of getting in. Uh, for example, for me in the Weather region, uh, we have a website that's google.wrdsb.ca, and we can use our regular login credentials to get there that way. Um, but if you go to just a Google web page anytime, you just go to Google search, for example, here on the screenshot, you can see Google Canada. If you go up to the top right hand corner, uh, for me, there's a little image of myself there, but you can see like a little uh, na uh, um, NAMIS person there. If you click on that, it'll ask you for your login credentials, you can log in there. The second of that part to really understand about Google is that you have access to all kinds of apps through this space. And we're going to be talking about a few of them tonight, but there are a lot more that we won't be talking about. If you look up in the top right hand corner again, you see those nine little boxes that are bunched together that kind of look like a box itself. That's a quick access route to any of your Google apps once you're signed into your account. It's really important to know. And you can see I've got that opened up here and those examples like jumping into Gmail or jumping into Drive or very quickly opening up a, a blank Google Doc to work in. So uh, you can see that here we're going to be talking about Drive. So if you want to get into your Google Drive account, which we'll have a chance to go and play with in a little bit, you're going to log into your account from the Google homepage here. You can click on those nine little boxes and then click on the drive icon, which is a uh, tricolored band triangle, and it says drive underneath. Uh, the other way you can get to Google Drive and log into your account is if you just go to www.google.com backslash drive. I'll bring you to a screen like this. You can click go to Google Drive. If you're signing with your account already, it'll jump right to it, or it'll ask you for your credentials to sign in as well. Okay, uh, once you log into your Drive account or Google account and go to Drive, you're going to see a screen that looks something along this line. Now, if you haven't used much in the past yourself, um, you won't see much. It'll be kind of a blank space in the middle. Uh, I've been, I'm a very avid user of Drive, pretty much all of my workflow, all my lesson plans, a lot of my personal stuff, I save within Google Drive here. So you can see I've got a variety of file folders there and files underneath. Yep. Uh, we'll talk you through how to work through that and how to make those things and how to organize yourself through the session. Uh, but most of you, if you haven't used it much in the past, you can expect mostly a blank space here. But this is the basis of what the drive home screen looks like. All right, now in the top left-hand corner of your drive account, you're going to see this uh, bold red button that says new. And there's a couple of really important things to understand about drive. So there's really two things combined into one. The first thing Google Drive is, is a, a cloud storage space. So it's a, it's a place to store anything you want. Um, again, think of it like a hard drive on your computer or carrying around USB, but instead of time to be that tied to that physical thing, 
it's actually stored online for you. So it doesn't matter what device you're on, if you upload something to there and save it there, like you would say on a USB, it's not tied to that USB though. You can do it from your laptop and then go into work the next day and jump on a computer or in the staff room and log into your account and go to Drive and you'll see those files there. You can upload pretty much whatever you want to Google Drive. It can be uh, videos, it can be fi uh, pictures, it, can, it doesn't have to be Google files, so it can be PowerPoint, uh, Word, uh, Keynote, um, it might be a PDF. You can really store pretty much any kind of file type in here. It can be audio files, video files that we record in class. Um, another really important thing to understand is storage space. Uh, with a personal account, so I'm not sure what it's at now because it can physically change it, but uh, if you're just using a personal account through Google, I think you get about 30 gigabytes of free storage, which is quite, quite large. Um, if you're fortunate enough to work with a board that has a Google Apps for Education account for you, it's actually unlimited storage. So if you want to record videos in class every day for an hour and throw them in your drive, they will store them for you there. They will always be there for you and you have unlimited storage space. Okay, once you click on that new button though, you've got a few things to organize yourself. So you see, you saw I had a bunch of folders there to organize myself. The first thing you do here is just click folder and it will create a folder there for you to dump files into to keep yourself organized. Then you have two options here when it comes to this cloud storage space or saving things in the cloud. The first is called file upload. If you click on that, it's just going to be like uh, uploading a file to an email attachment. It will pop up the box on your computer. You'll have access to the hard drive of the computer you're on. You can select a file upload. Uh, the second option here is folder upload. And it's important to note this only works if you're using Google Chrome as a web browser. You can use Drive on pretty much any web browser. It works in Firefox, Safari, um, Internet Explorer. Um, but if you want to do a folder upload, which would be taking a folder off of your computer and uploading all the files and all the subfiles and all the subfolders within it in one shot, you need to be using Google Chrome to do that. I think that's kind of just Google's way of saying if you want you using Chrome, you can save time by using Chrome. We're not going to enable this in other web browsers. So uh, again, the first part here when we talk about Google Drive is just this basic idea of cloud storage. You can store anything you want there and have access to it from any device. It's stored in the cloud for you. That's really basic, and that's just kind of the first step for Google Drive. Um, another option here is the idea shared with me. So right under where it says your drive, and that's your personal drive, those files that you have uploaded, and that's where you're storing things. The second option is shared with me here. If you click on shared with me, these are other files that people have shared with your Google Apps account. So again, if you've got a colleague who wants to send a picture to you, or a worksheet, or a lesson plan, or a video they took in class, they'll share it with your Gmail account or your Google Apps account, and you will find it here. It won't automatically go to your Drive account and store there, that's your personal space. You'll see these shared with me here. Now you can choose to add things to your personal Drive that others have shared with you. So we go right click on it and click Add Drive. It's a very quick and easy way to store it there for you. But again, if you're trying to find something that someone else to share with you, you wanna to come to Share With Me and not start off in your Drive space. And we'll talk a lot more about sharing and how sharing works later on in this presentation. Uh, next up, just looking at your Drive account, you've got some basic options here. So if you're trying to find something for me, myself, I mentioned I do a ton of work in here. I've got a lot of files in this space. Um, I search for things often. I try to organize myself as much with folders, but if I'm looking for something, I'm going to start typing in uh, search for Drive there at the top, and it will bring up a list of files for me that I've used most recently and kind of help me find what I'm looking for. Over to the top right in your Drive account, you've got different options for how you view things. Uh, me personally, I like looking things at a grid view, which is what you're looking at right now in my drive. But if you click that first option there, it says toggle view of drive, you can also switch to a list view. Uh, it's really a personal preference here. There's no right or wrong way. You also have different ways to sort your drive. You can do it by most recent, alphabetical, and get those options there. If you click on recent activity, it'll give you a list of like who's made changes to what, what files most recently. And you've got some options in the settings space there too. Um, about six or seven months ago, drive switched over to a new user interface. That's the one you're seeing with me. If yours looks slightly different, you click on that settings button, click on, you know, using your drive, you'll see that there as well. All right, that's you kind of the basics of Google Drive as a file storage space or folder storage space. The really cool part about Google Drive though is it's also a creation space. So it's not just this cloud store of storing files, it also allows you to create a bunch of different kinds of files. And we'll be talking with two of those tonight, uh, Google Docs and Google Slides. So you click on that same new button. Again, you have those first three options. You can create folders to organize yourself. You can upload a file, upload a folder. You can also create something like a Google Doc, which is very similar to, say, Microsoft Word or Pages. You can create Google Slides, which is, say, would be very similar to PowerPoint or, um, sorry, Keynote for Mac. 
You can also see options for more there, and there's actually more tools than your Google Drawings and other things. Uh, that's time for another session, though. We're going to focus tonight on just Drive, Docs, and Slides. Okay. Uh, again, I don't I like talking to people for too long. I'd feel like I'd like some time to have soak things in. So I put together about a, I think about an eight or nine minute video here for people. Uh, I'm going to have Mally post the link over in the chat feature and pull up on the screen. Um, I believe Mally, and correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to play the video in the chat and the, this feature here for people who are on their computers and they can watch it that way. Or if you're on a mobile device where the video is not playing for you, you can actually click on the link and go off to YouTube to watch it as well. And just as a workflow here for people, uh, when you're done watching the video, we're going to ask you to come back here and give us that green little check mark again to let us know that you finished the video. And then right after that, there's going to be a space for people to kind of go play after watching the video, try things out themselves, explore Google Drive and uh, playing around with things, and then we'll take any questions you have as you guys Yep, thanks, Andrew. So I'll just put, I'll put the chat in the chat box. And I'm just going to start the web tour. So as Andrew mentioned, if you are on a mobile device, you'll need to cut and paste that um, that link into a browser and the web tour should be starting right now. Now I'll just ask you to jump us back to the presentation here. Okay, perfect. Um, if you were able to follow along on your advice or the video that we played for you, um, now is kind of some built-in time. We're going to kind of put the time here for about five minutes for people to kind of go have a chance and play themselves. You kind of saw my slides through and had a chance to see it in action yourselves. So I would like to give people, before we go too far ahead and throw too much at you, uh, to go get have a chance, get a feel for it. And now is a great time to pop in here and ask some questions too. I'll have a formal question space. I'm happy to have people jump on and take any question they have now. And as you're working in the space, just a reminder, can I give us that green check mark when you finish the video? Because we do have some people moving at their own pace and watching the video themselves. But if you have finished the video, great time to go and uh, play around for yourself for a little bit.
And so just jump in here, everyone. Uh, the people are just kind of getting back from the video. Uh, now is some built-in time to go and kind of try out Google Drive for yourself. So you want to log into your account, uh, jump in Drive, and just play around with some of the things that we just looked at in the video or looked at through my slides. Um, and we will click at least slide into question space here too. We're going to have a formal question space, but if anyone has questions now, I see Lorena, you just popped a hand up there. Uh, please feel free to jump in. And I'll set the timer for five minutes. Thanks, Molly. Now, Lorena, I have a couple ways to ask questions here. Uh, first off, please feel free, if you have a microphone on your device, to jump on the mic and just ask it so that we can hear you too. If not, you're welcome to post it over in the chat feature as well. Uh, that's a great question, Lorena. Can I ask what web browser you're using? Are you using Google Chrome or using a different web browser? Okay, then that's a really interesting question. I'm not sure. The only other thing I could say is if you're using an outdated version of Chrome, but when you're in uh, Google Drive through the Chrome web browser, uh, if you click on new there, you should definitely see fully upload. Oh, see, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so if you're an explorer. So yeah, if you go in, that's the reason uh, for what Google, I think, just to try and encourage people to use Chrome. Um, one of the little hacks, they don't publicize this, but uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, one of the things they do, uh, everything else works, the file uploads, you know, go up, upload individual files, no problem to your drive with any web browser. So you can use Safari or on a Mac or um, Firefox or Explorer. But if you're looking for that folder upload, it's just kind of one of the ways to get people using Google Chrome. Um, it's really a personal preference. Uh, personally, I love Chrome. I'm a Mac user and I kind of jump back and forth between Chrome and uh, Safari. But there are some really nice advantages to using Chrome, especially if you're using Google Apps a fair bit. And for those of you who are listening but not following the chat, the question there was um, why couldn't I see or why couldn't someone see the option to upload an entire folder into their drive? Uh, the reason was you have to be in Google Chrome to do that. Uh, Jesse, it's a good question for on an iPad. There's really two ways to do it. There is a free app um, in the App Store for an iPad to download Google Chrome. I also recommend you download the Google Docs app, which is separate, and Google Slides is separate app from Drive itself. Uh, but the, or you can just uh, open up any web browser and go and sign into your account there too and use the web-based version of your iPad as well. So um, I personally like using the app on my iPad, but you're welcome to use the browser too. Oh, that's good to know, Danielle. Uh, that wasn't the case a while ago. So for those of you using Firefox, you're actually able to upload entire folders using Firefox as well. It's good to hear. Thank you for sharing, by the way. Hi, Andrew. I have a couple of students who have shared files with me. How can I tell what student has shared something with me? Like, for example, uh, today they're working on an animal report. Somebody shared a tiger report, but I can't tell who the author is. How would I figure that out so I can put it in the right file? Uh, absolutely, Laura. That's a very good question. Uh, so when people are sharing things with you, um, there's a few ways, depending on if you use Gmail or not, um, if you're using Google Apps for Education with your school board or not. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious, Laura, do you use Google Apps for Education? Yeah, we're using Google Apps for Education, so my students would have shared it through their own personal Google Drive because all the students in the TDSB have their own Google account. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so in that scenario, um, depending on how you have it set up and how your board has it set up, you will probably get a Gmail notification um, when someone shares something with you. And it will, without the students actually sending you an email, they're just sharing it through Drive and with your account. If you go into Gmail with your school account, you'll actually have an update section there and you'll see notifications from people. Uh, it'll have the student's name there and what's tied to it. Um, there are also easier ways. You can just open up the document and click the, and we're going to get into sharing and actually some of this later in the presentation, but since you asked, I'm happy to talk about it here. If you click on the share button, you will see um, that's one space. You can actually see who the owner of the doc is. Uh, another thing oh. you might look at is in the top of the doc in the middle, it'll say last edited by, and presuming it's the student who's working on it and doing the work through it, um, you'll be able to see their name right there in the top middle of the doc. It's kind of a small gray space. We'll say last edited by. But okay, if you don't yeah. see that and you don't get the email, just click on that blue share button in the top right-hand corner, 
and then you can see who the owner of the document is that way. You're right. I found it. I got it. Thanks. Perfect. No problem. Uh, and yeah, April, that's another great thing too. Um, so Laura, one thing I'd recommend too, and it's not part of the session, but I love Google Classroom. If you're looking to get templates or documents that are things for students to use or have them hand work into, Google Classroom is absolutely amazing. Uh, if you post something as an assignment with say a blank Google Doc or a template you want students to work through, um, and you have this option to click on file and then make a copy for each student, what that does for you is it will take your template or your blank document and makes 30 exact replicas, say if you have 30 students, pushes it out to all your students, it changes the actual file name of the document to add the student's name to it, and it automatically shares it between you and the students. So the students don't have to go back and click share. Uh, okay, can you just repeat that? Sorry, because I do have a Google Classroom, and I've had, I have not had success um, okay. in sharing documents, so if you can just go slow again and yes. repeat that. Yeah, sorry, I, I do want to go up because we're kind of, there's a, this is a jam-packed session and we're not talking about specifically about Classroom this session, but if you're using Google Docs and Drive, Classroom is fantastic as a teacher, so I'll take it through you one more time and uh, just so everyone knows too, if you, I got my contact information in here and I'm, I love speaking out and connecting with teachers about uh, things in the classroom, okay. so if someone has questions after the session too, please feel free to email me, but I will go through it one more time for you here too. So if you're using Google Classroom with your students, you've got your students in there, you have the options to say post an announcement or post an assignment. Right. If you post it as an assignment with a student, um, you'll see a little drive icon there, like that little triangle. Um, mm -hmm. And if you click on that, you can pull out a template you have. So say you have a worksheet you want your students working through or some questions you want them to answer. If you pull something in from your drive, off to the right of it, you're going to see three little options. It'll say that students can view the file, you have students to edit the file, or you have an option to make a copy for each student. Um, viewing just means they can click on and they can see it. Um, right. Students editing it means every kid in the class can go and edit that one document, which sounds How crazy. How do you lock it so that only one student can use it? Because I've had students sabotaging other students' work. For sure. And we'll talk about actually, there's a thing we're going to talk about later today, how you can shut that down pretty quickly too when you police that. Uh, but the last option there is make a copy for each student. And if you do that, um, it, what it does, it automatically adds the student's name to that file. They each get their own copy. Uh, and it's shared between the two of you and only between the two of you. So only you and the student can edit that specific document. Okay, so, so it's make a copy for what? What was that last one? Make a? Make a copy for each student. A co okay, thank you. No worries. Okay, um, unless there's other, any other pressing questions right now, I'm going to kind of continue on with the presentation here. So anyone else want to jump in right now with a question? Yeah, and thanks, April, for the great, great questions. It's probably a good idea for specifics to contact Andrew um, outside of the session. So thanks. Those are great questions. All right, sliding on here. Uh, so we just took our questions there, so I'll jump out of that. All right, so next up, we're going to slide to Google Docs. We went over the basis of Google Drive there and for that idea of this. It's two really workspaces for Google Drive in one spot. The first off being a cloud storage space where you can store anything you want videos, photos, PowerPoint, Word files, PDFs, and obviously all your Google Apps for Education stuff. Uh, and the second piece is for Google Drive is that it's also a creation tool. Uh, so it's kind of a, a word processor or a suite of apps. If you're used to buying Microsoft Office, uh, in many ways, Google Apps or Google Drive kind of covers down the same thing for you. In a little different way, we're going to talk about the similarities and differences in this presentation. So what I'm going to slide into now is talking about the basics of Google Docs. All right, so back in your drive, and it's the same space here. We we'll talk about clicking that new button. We went through the file upload things. Uh, the other option here is the creation piece, and what we're going to talk about right now is Google Docs specifically. Um, looking at Google Docs, think of it very similar to using Microsoft Word or Pages or some other word processor. Um, it's basically the same idea. If you want to create a new document, you just come in here, click New, click on Docs, and then it's going to jump you over into a new screen that's going to look like something that's similar to this without all the arrows and text on it. Uh, first going into Google Doc, it's going to look very similar to other word processors you've used. Okay, it's going to be a blank white page. You have very similar options. You can kind of see a bunch of them get highlighted here. So you've got your undo button. You can change the size of the document. You can play around with the font style and the font size. You've got things like bold, italics, and underline. Uh, you can do left alignment, center alignment, right alignment, play around with the spacing, lists and bullets. Um, very similar to what we're used to. But because it's web-based, and again, this goes back to working in the cloud. When you're working in a Google Doc, you're not working on a file that's tied to your computer. 
you are working online and it's saved online and it works online. That's where it's stored. You're in the cloud for that entire space as you're working on this doc. And again, I would say this is probably the biggest shift in mentality. If you're not familiar with this cloud workspace, you're not tied to that device anymore. It's tied up there for you. So again, we talked about switching devices before and working the Google Doc is the same idea. Uh, me personally, I might be at home on my laptop. Uh, I might start a Google Doc there. I might just close my computer and go to bed. If I leave my laptop at home and I haven't emailed anything and just like close my laptop up, head off to work the next day with my laptop at home, if I jump into my English department room and jump on the computer there, I log into my account, I come back and open up that same document in Drive, and all those changes I made the night before are there for me. And I can start working away at it again. And then if I leave that and jump on my, say, my cell phone or my iPad in my class later, log into my account, and I'll see that second group of changes there. It just syncs up for you automatically through the cloud. It's not tied to the device, it's tied to um, the cloud itself and where you're working with it. Okay, so those are the very basics there. If you look up in the very top left-hand corner, when you open up a new doc, you'll see the title there is Untitled Document. If you click in that, um, that's essentially like you naming the file. So if you remember, like, you're doing file save as and it asks you to create a name for the file, this is where you're going to do it in your Google Doc. You're just going to post in that top left-hand corner there. Um, the other option to do, if you actually center something and put a title on the first line and start typing it in, it will actually default that title that you put in up into that spot in the top left-hand corner as your file name, too. You can change it up there as well. Okay? The next thing on Google Docs, well, because it's cloud-based, and the really magical thing with Google Docs and using the classroom specifically, is that by being web-based and being this Google Apps for Education space where you as a teacher have and your students have it as well, it gives you a lot of nice features out for support collaboration, working together and sharing with each other that you can't get really out of just using the Microsoft Office or Pages. Um, so, based on this up here, uh, you can see in the top right corner there, you've got comments from others. And we'll talk about the commenting feature more here, but it's basically in that space, and you can leave comments down the side of a document without changing the document itself. I love using this space. Like I said, I'm an English teacher in secondary school, and so I do a lot of shared uh, writing with my students and do a lot of some uh, informative feedback towards them. The comment space off the right document is great, and we'll look about that in a little more detail soon. Um, something if you played around with Google Docs before, but maybe not a lot, you might not be aware of, it's what's called uh, your editing modes, okay? So if you can see off the far right top hand corner there again, you see it says editing, it's got a little pen beside it. Editing means if I click on the doc and I start adding things in, it's changing the actual document itself. If I click on editing, I can actually have the choice to switch it over to suggesting. What suggesting does is you can actually type into the document um, and you can make changes to it, but as you're doing changes in suggesting, it actually does it in a new font color. And this is really for working on a shared document for someone. So for example, if I'm working with a student and doing some, making some changes to their doc and some suggestions towards them for what they, how I think they should write it or how they should change some spelling or fix some punctuation, um, it doesn't change their work itself, but it shows it in a different color what changes I have made. So I can really kind of model that for them. They can come into the doc later and see those changes in those colors, and they can choose to accept them and convert the doc over or choose to leave them there. The other really magical thing about Google Docs um, is the blue share button in the top right-hand corner. And again, what's great about this is you can share this doc in a variety of ways, and that will be a big feature of this presentation a little later on. And when it comes to that sharing space, uh, you can share it as an active link with someone. So if you share that link out, it's something that they can view. You give other people the access to it. You can give people the access just to comment on it so they can see your document, and they can also give some comments off to the side without changing the document itself or you can actually have this editable space. And this is the really cool thing um, as we talk more and more about the importance of collaboration in education, Google Docs is a phenomenal space for working in this collaborative space because you have multiple people working on one document um, and have that workflow going back and forth between them. So this is like kind of gone are the days of someone working on something, downloading it to their computer, having to open up an email, add someone's email address in, click on the little paper clip, upload the file, send it off to them, and then that second person you're sending off to now needs to open your email, download the file, open it up on their computer, make their own changes, go save it, and then mail it back through mailbox to a third person. Uh, I always found that workflow very annoying. I was never sure what the other person was doing. The real magical space of Google Docs here is that in live, you can see changes that others are making to that document. You can have multiple people working on a document at the same time in different spots of it, and you can watch someone else typing away. If you've never done it before, it's a really interesting kind of see for the first time. It might be seeming a little strange and odd, and we'll talk about troubleshooting issues with that a little bit later on.
So for the home screen here, those are the very basics for it. You can, again, very similar to working in, say, Microsoft Word or Pages with these added features of the comments and the sharing, which we'll talk more about. All right, I uh, just want to talk about some other functionality here within Google. And again, you guys will have access to all these slides later. I know I'm going to move at a pretty quick pace here, but again, you're going to get another chance to see it in action with the video. You have a chance to play and ask some questions yourself. So because we've got a lot to go through, I'm moving at a pretty quick pace. But again, with that idea, you have to see the video and ask questions later. Okay, so if you click on the insert button towards the top left, you get a variety of options here. Uh, you can upload images into the space here, so you can add something from your computer. Uh, you can link the hyperlink to certain things. You want to ask to have people access websites, and you can see this document. They can just click the link and jump to that website right away. Uh, really great in primary or secondary, so I'm like trying to write a link out on the board, just link in the doc, have the doc share with the students, have them click the link, and they can jump to the website you want them to be on very quickly. If you're working in the science or math space, insert's a great way. You can jump into equations here, and you've got a lot of different scientific notations and mathematical formulas you can enter. Uh, you can insert drawings here, which is a different way you can kind of add some shapes and things. You can insert those into your documents. You have access to things like the table and footnotes and adding in special characters. Uh, if you're a French teacher, you'll find a lot of stuff here. A language teacher, you'll find a lot of stuff in special character space. And other things like page number and page count. Uh, you also decide and insert. You also have the formatting options here. So you get some basics that you see on the toolbar and within the doc itself, like bold, the tabs, and underlines. If you want to say use strikes through, or again, for math and sciences, you've got things like superscript and, superscript and subscript here. Uh, you can clear formatting and play with alignment options here too within the formatting space. Uh, next aside, that is probably what I find one of the most amazing things about uh, Google Docs. Uh, I love a few of these tools here, and when I show them to my students for the first time, I actually tend to get some oohs and ahs from them because it blows their minds as well. Uh, so the first one here is clicking on tools that I want to talk about. Uh, again, very basic here. You can find word counts in here. Uh, but one of the amazing features I'm going to go through this morning, and you have to see this in action in the video too, is the research tool. Uh, if you go to tools and click on research, uh, I'll show you here in a sec, but you have this little box that pops off to the right of your document. And within your doc, you can essentially search the web through Google for anything you like. So if you're looking for a quick definition or a reference to something, you can just get a little search box off to, box to the side of your document and find it there. Where it gets really, really cool, you can actually filter it, say, by images. So if you're looking for an image to add to your document, whatever it may be, you can actually search it off to the side of your document, actually go into Google Images, find that image and all you have to do is click and drag it over into your doc and now it's there right in your document for you. Uh, my students really love this feature. Again, as an English teacher, uh, we have to work with the news reports. Like if they're looking for images, they have access to anything that Google has to offer. And again, a really cool piece that actually starts your reference for you automatically by putting the link in as a footnote in your document, which we'll show here in a sec. And the other really interesting thing, and this is only launched by Google, I'd say about four or five weeks ago now, is voice typing. And this is also under tools. And voice typing is exactly as it sounds. Uh, you can actually dictate to the document with your voice. So if you click on voice typing and turn your mic on, this is a little mic pop up. You click on that, you can actually just speak to your computer through the microphone, and it actually will put your text in there for you. Again, as an English teacher myself, I'm like working with a lot of formal feedback with students, but I can do a lot of writing, and I can tell you I talk a lot faster than I can type, and so it saves me a lot of time by doing some feedback this way and share it with the students. Uh, really, really cool too. So you got voice typing there as well. Built in, it's free, right online here from your docs. All right, this is the other thing that's really important. And uh, if you're kind of half listening and half watching and playing around with things, I really suggest if you're new to Google Docs that you listen carefully to this one because this kind of freaks people out the first time through. Like you can see it here, I've clicked on File. And you'll notice here under File in the Google Doc, there's no button that says Save and no button that says Save As. Um, but you'll notice there's a highlighted for here up to the top of the doc that says All Changes Saved in Drive. Um, because Google Drive is web-based, um, you're not actually ever clicking File, Save As, and finding a spot to save it. It's automatically saving in your drive for you. And so the really cool, interesting thing here is that Google is essentially saving your work almost every single second for you. Um, I'm curious. I'm just going to throw a question out to the group here. If you can just give me a uh, click the hand button off to the left there uh, from the main room. If this has ever happened to you, I'm just curious who in here has either lost some work because their computer crashed or froze and they hadn't saved for 15 or 20 minutes, uh, just throw a hand up there, or has even worse, had a computer crash on them and they've lost all their files. Uh, yeah, you can see a lot of hands jump up here and I'd say like if you've been working with a computer for more than a few years, there's a good chance that you've either had the computer freeze and you've lost your work, 
um, and it's really frustrating, or even worse, if your files are on your computer and the computer crashes on you and you can't get those files off, you can lose those files forever. The amazing thing about working in Google Drive here and Docs specifically right now is that it's saving for you literally every second. Uh, so now you're not worrying about your computer crashing at all. It's just there and saved for you. There is no file save button. It's always saving it for you second by second. Uh, we'll also talk about the uh, revision history tool in a little bit, which actually kind of keeps a running log of all the changes you've made through your document. So you need to look at different versions of it and how it's evolved over time for you and your students, which is really interesting piece too. So again, don't stress out with trying to find a way to save your files. It's always saving for you automatically. The only thing to keep in mind here is that for it to save for you to the cloud, you need to make sure you have an internet connection to do that. Okay? So as long as you have the internet connection, you're good to go. All right, uh, one of the final things I'm gonna mention here before I give you guys kind of scroll up and watch this is over there beside tools and just beside the table spot up in the toolbar, you're gonna see something called add-ons as well. I'm not, this is a basic tutorial today, so I'm not gonna go deep into add-ons. But essentially what add-ons are, are other separate tools people have built to work within Google Docs. So this might be coders on their own or might sometimes be Google themselves who are looking to implement tools to work within your Google Docs. You can see I've added a few in here myself. So I've got EasyBib, uh, which is a tool that you can actually put in the title of a book, for example, and it will give you options to populate uh, in MLA or APA or Chicago style right away and build them excited for you. Uh, Kaizena Mini is a fantastic tool. It's actually built down here in Kitchener Waterloo. Um, and it allows you to actually leave voice comments on your docs. So not voice typing like in Google Docs where you talk and it would actually leave text on your document for you, but Kaizen actually allows you to leave audio comments right in the docs so students can come in and listen to it. Uh, again, another space is very time saving for me and it's also great for differentiation. If you've got students who aren't maybe so strong from a reading standpoint, but are strong orally, you can leave oral feedback towards them. They can actually listen to your feedback or if you're in languages, you can actually talk about proper pronunciation and things like that. So if you click on the Get Add-ons button there, you can search for those yourself and find a whole bunch of different add-ons. There's different ones for different subjects. So a lot of it is geared towards the educational space. Okay, uh, and the very final thing I think here before we get to the video demonstration is the help function. And the great thing I love about this is, this is how I've learned most of what I've been telling you guys to do today too through Google Docs here, is you click on help and just start typing in what you wanna do. Um, it's just gonna show you how. Or you can click and it's gonna give you a little pop-up box that tells you exactly what you want. And actually sometimes we'll even do it for you. So I think in the video I type in like how do I do a superscript and it actually just changes the notation within the document for me. So I can actually just put a number in as a superscript right there within the doc. So if you're ever not sure how to do something, you're looking at when does Google Docs do this or there's something I want to try, just try the help feature, start typing it in and it will probably tell you how to do it and even give you the keyboard shortcut, shortcut for how to do that. Okay, and then over here, I also want to talk about commenting within Docs. I mentioned commenting already, but this is actually what it looks like. And there's a few ways to leave a comment. So you can see here in the text, I typed in, I love Google Docs, and then I went and highlighted the word Docs at the end. Um, a few ways to create a comment box. You can see the comment box off to the right of the document here. So it's tied to my name. It's got my little image there. And it's got a little dialog box for me to type into. This is one of the ways I love sharing feedback with people. If I'm working with a colleague on a lesson plan, we have a shared document between the two of us and she's asking for some feedback from me, I'll do it this way. I'm not gonna change her document, but I'm gonna say, here, have you thought about this? Or did you think about looking at this? Or how about trying to add this in? It's also amazing back and forth with students because they can share their work with me. And then in that formal process, I can give them some feedback through writing their document. It's organized so well. Again, as an English teacher myself, uh, it, I was scribbling all over documents in the past with pen and pencil. I was putting arrows over here and saying, over here. By the time I got to the fifth or 10th paper, uh, my writing was getting worse and worse. And it's like having students come up to me saying, Mr. Bronski, how do I read this? Um, and here it's organized so nicely for them. They can click on the highlighted piece and that dialog box is gonna pop out for them and they can see the very specific feedback you left them. It's organized very nicely. Again, I'll demonstrate how that works in the video coming up. All right, and so with that in mind here, uh, I threw a lot at you, and I'm sorry if I was going too quickly for some of you, but again, it's within mind here that you have a chance to watch this video, uh, see an action yourself. So Mally, I'm gonna ask you to post the link again off to the right, and then you get a chance to start the video here, and just a reminder everybody, um, when you get back to the video, it gives that green check mark to let us know that you finished it, and we'll slide into a chance for people to go play and try it out themselves and work in Google Docs, and then also ask some questions.
the one you broke in from the house. But first thing you want to do is maybe come back here. Yeah, it's probably not for you. Stop. And then I'll take you out of the office here. And you have to do some stuff. The new problem that we're starting, and it's not going to be as easy as that is. It's not going to be as easy as that is. It's not going to be as easy as that is. Alright, uh, so I'm going to use the computer option, so I'll just pop that in the corner. I'll just use the computer option here. Turn to it. Okay, uh, first thing is, I got my code in the class for the people. This is how I was looking at it. And I put the code in for the new web page. Word, I want to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it forward. 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 I'm going to Something it makes it log and see what can carry off online for OTS. 
Um, if I find an image I like here, um, I actually have the option if I click on it, and I can actually drag it across into my document here and release. It's actually going to bring the document across. So once this image has been inserted into my doc, I can go and play around some resizing here, make it a little larger. And you also notice this little number one on the side. Um, Thanks, Andrew. That was uh, that was great. Um, just keeping in mind the time, there's only 23 minutes left in the session, and I know people have a ton of questions and are um, excited to learn a lot more about that. So, do we want to set the timer for five minutes for questions, or a little less? And you need to activate your mic again. There we go, and sorry for the delay. Uh, for some reason, it wasn't giving me a chance to access my mic there. Thanks, Molly. Uh, yes, I do want to be conscious of time. The other two sections are thankfully a little shorter, um, but unless someone has a, a really um, forceful question right now, I'm happy to stick around at the end of this presentation. I do want to stick to our timeline at 9 o'clock. So I'm going to hopefully move quickly through the rest. And if people have questions, and Eric and Mike, I see you guys have your hands up there, feel free to throw them in the chat, or if you guys are okay waiting right to the end, I will take any questions from people there. I'm happy to stick around past nine tonight. Okay, so the hand coming down. And so my plan is to go ahead and get through this to get people out of here for nine. But again, I'm happy to stick around and answer any questions then. All right, so we've been talking about using docs here. You have a chance to go and play with yourselves after this. And again, you'll have access to these videos to go back and look. Um, and we'll jump ahead with the questions right now and come back. The other thing I really want to talk about, and this I personally see this as being a really key and important feature when you're looking at Google Docs, Google Slides, and working in Drive, is the ability to share with other people. And again, like I said, we've talked about this about already, but it's a very different workflow from sharing with people um, as by emailing it as an attachment to people. It's uh, web-based, uh, people have access to it, it's one document that most people can see and work on at the same time. Um, and so it's absolutely amazing for collaboration because, uh, again, instead of having this one file that someone's working on, you can email it back and forth. You can see each other's work. You can see who's doing what. It's color-coded for you. It's really fantastic. Um, and so for me personally, like, and you can use it in many ways. There's different ways you can look at this, but um, I, I actually tie it back to growing success a fair bit. And the thing that we're supposed to be doing in doing our class, the things we talk about, like foreign feedback, personalizing things for our students, um, making it very student-centered. I think Google Docs and Drive is a great space to kind of get at these and look at that form of space where students are going to help their learning along. Uh, so an example for me was just kind of sharing writing back and forth with students. This is a quick screenshot from my first time, and this is back in, yeah, uh, May 2012 now, so over three, three and a half years ago. Um, and this was kind of my first dive out with students. It was the very simple feature of just looking at student work, highlighting the document, and putting that comment feature off to the side. Again, it's such a nicer workflow when you have having scribbles all over the page and writing all over it and having students trying to decipher my handwriting. Uh, it was a great workflow here. And you can also see that she also has a peer editor on this document. Um, so again, it wasn't just me going in, it was other students coming to this doc and giving another student suggestions about how to improve their work in a nice, easy, and simple way. Uh, so when you're looking to share within Google Docs, this is the exact same for slides. And uh, my slides presentation is going to actually be very short because there's a lot of overlap between slides and docs here. But you'll see that blue share button off in the top right hand corner. And when you click that blue share button, you get this box that pops up in the middle for share with others. And you have a few different ways to go about this. Um, if you want to share with very specific people and you have their name or email address, if you just click in that box and you'll notice enter names or email addresses here, you're going to start typing it in. If you're in a Google Apps for Education board, as you start typing someone's name in, 
it should automatically start populating with uh, the person's full email address if they're a teacher or student with an account in the board. So that's a really nice feature if you're in Google Apps. Uh, the other thing when you're sharing with specific people, when you're doing any kind of sharing with a doc or a slide, is there's really three default functions to share. Uh, the first one, if you're sharing with something, uh, someone individually here, is that it's as a can edit, as you can see there on the screen. Um, when you're looking at that, that means if you share something as a can edit, means that person can also come in here and change your document, make changes to it, and play around with it. If that sounds really scary to you and you don't ever want to share that with someone, uh, I can show, I'll show you a bit later here that you're actually, all your work is not gone. You can jump back to an earlier version at any time. You can find out who made the changes. Uh, I know someone had in here, they were having some problems with students making changes to other students' docs. You can shut that down very quickly because you can actually see the student that made the changes and call them out on it. And that's fine when you do that once or twice in class. It kind of shuts it down completely and students stop messing around with other students' documents. Uh, so you can edit one option there. The other option then for sharing is can comment. What can comment does is no one can come in and change the document itself, but if they have can comment access, they can come and leave those comments off to the side of the document that we were just talking about that I was showing. Uh, if you're in a can edit, you also have commenting privileges as well. And then the third option is can view, which means anyone you share it with can come and see your document, but they can't leave comments on it, they can't make any changes to the actual document itself. That's for individual sharing. Um, if you look up in the top right hand corner, you also see this uh, spot that says get shareable link. If you click that, it automatically defaults over to giving you a unique link to this document. Um, and if you copy and paste that link or email it off to someone, it's basically anyone who has the link will have access to it. So you don't need to add individual people to it. You just click on get shareable link. It's going to give you a link. You're going to copy it. And then you can send it off wherever you like. If you have a class website, you can post it there. You can post it in Google Classroom. You can email it to people or to a group or to a conference of people at your school. And if they click the link, they'll see the document. Uh, you can change those permissions there too. The default, if you're in a Google Apps or Education board, will be only share with people within your board and not people outside of it. But you can change that and look at that as well. And then the last part I'll mention in the sharing settings here is that advanced button in the top, bottom right hand corner. And this is to get very specific details. Uh, we had someone asking earlier about um, how do I know whose document it is and what student. If you click on advanced, you'll see all the permissions for the document. You see the individual people it's been shared with or how your sharing settings are set up. And you can change them there too. So if you want to add new people or delete people off it or change someone's sharing uh, permissions on this document, so you want to move someone, say, from a can comment to a can edit, you can do that in the advanced section here. All right, let's slide ahead. Uh, so we just kind of review here and see what that looks like. So you look on that candidate document there. Uh, you can change that to a can comment or a can view. Again, that's with very specific people. Um, if you click on the advanced button, which I mentioned, you can see the default here that it's a private document, which is only you have access to it. That is the default for every single document you use. Um, but once you go from there, you can invite individual people here as well, or you can change that document, the overall sharing permissions for the document to it. Say anyone can edit. Uh, or anyone can comment on it, it's really up to you. Um, and then for the different ways to share, you link on that, you can see the options I have here. So you always have the options, you can put it like on public on the web, which means it's searchable, anyone can find it, anyone can like click the link to this document and access it. Um, or if you have a Google App for Education account, you'll see the other options here for just within your school board. So people with the link or they can search it out that way too, you have options for sharing there as well. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about here is revision history. Um, in your document, you'll see this in the video here in a sec. If you click on File in your document and you scroll down and you click on See Revision History, it will bring you to a kind of a new page here where you can see your document and it'll open this little box off to the right here that has revision history on it. Um, you can see it's got my name there and then different times of the day and like the date. Uh, so for me, this was that I put this document together today and I had like changes at various times. And I can click at any point in time, and I can revert the document back to that moment. So the great thing with it being stored in the cloud here and all your work being up there is that any work you do is never gone. Even if I delete it off the page currently right now, I could come back here and see what it looked like 10 minutes earlier or a day earlier or a year ago, and I could see what the document looked like at that point, and I have the option to restore it to that. So again, if you're afraid of sharing a document with someone that can edit it, uh, you can actually see who changed what. So if someone goes in and actually deletes your work away, or so for example, your students, if you've got a group working together and you say someone's complaining about a student erasing their work or saying, I did this, now it's gone, you can actually color code by names. So you've had like five different editors on here, or they each have their own little color. And if I jump back on to say a day earlier and this saw someone works has been erased, they'll have a line through it, it'll have the color of the student who changed that and their name right beside it if they're signed in and shared with just those students with their accounts. 
So you can track it that way and see who did what. If it's open to anyone editing it, you cannot track it, but if it's shared with specific people and only those people have access or those students have access, you can see who did what for changes. So again, I think this is a great feature reason to say, like, not really have any fear about sharing a document that can edit with other people because you make your changes. And again, if someone else changes something you want to revert back, it's there, it's stored for you. And uh, yeah, really amazing feature. It blows my mind. The other thing I really love about this is that if you want to look at your students, uh, your students' workflow and just kind of look at their process or if they're engaging in a writing process or any kind of process or revision process, you can see if they've evolved it or not. So I'll give feedback to my students and I can go back and look and see if they used it or not and see if they actually took that to heart. Are they doing, are they making use of the revision process and playing around with it there? So you can look at that and see how they've evolved their work if they've done anything or not. Okay, uh, a little bit shorter video uh, here and then we'll start off in the slides for the last piece. So again, Mally, I'm going to pass it over to you. You can post the link to the video, and uh, when you're done, just give us that green check mark. So whenever you're back, you have a chance to play a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to jump back in here. And, oh, you already got me there. Great on the game. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I am very conscious of time. We've got about five minutes left here until we hit nine o'clock. And so with that being said, I've got one final section to go through here. I'm gonna jump past the try it yourself section just to finish off here in the questions section. I will stick around and talk about any questions anyone has at nine if you're happy to stick around. Um, I'm gonna go relatively quickly here through slides, um, but that's kind of also by intention because many of the features or slides are the exact same as Google Docs. I'm just gonna go over some of the differences here. And keep in mind, if I'm going a little too quickly for anyone, you will get access tomorrow to the recording of the session, and there's also links to the videos that we shared with you as well. So you can go back and watch them again if you like. Okay, with all that being said, the final piece I want to talk about tonight is Google Slides. Uh, and Google Slides is very similar to uh, using PowerPoint or, say, Keynote. Uh, Functionality is exactly the same in some ways. But again, you're working in that cloud-based space, and again, you can make it very collaborative. So that sharing feature is there, that commenting feature is there. So when you go, again, the exact same that you created Google Doc, you can just go into Drive, click on New, click on Slide, and it's going to bring to you a screen like this. Again, title is the exact same way, and one of the things I love about working with Google, for both yourself and for your students, is that it looks and feels the exact same through the different apps. So when working in a doc versus working in a slide and creating a presentation, much of the functionality is exactly the same which is, again, why I can go through this relatively quickly here and give you a good idea of slides because you've already seen how Docs works. Okay, with all that being said, uh, you can add your title up in the top left-hand corner there. Uh, off to the right, it's going to ask you for what theme you want to use. I think there's about 10, 12 to 15 themes built into Google Slides. You can search through and use any of them for free. You can also import themes from the bottom that people have shared with you that you've used in the past or created, and you can find other themes online as well that you can import and use. So you get a lot of different options for what the style of your presentation you want to look like. Um, to add new slides, there's a few ways to do that. You can right-click on any slide and duplicate it yourself or make a copy of it, um, or just add new ones. Also, in the very top left-hand corner there, you're going to see a little plus button. If you click on plus, it's going to add more slides there too. You can make as many rules as you want. Um, it also does have presenter notes. If you look down the bottom corner uh, of the sheet there, it says click to add notes. Those are something where you enter presenter mode. Uh, your audience, if you're plugging into a data projector, will not see those notes. They're just going to see your slides in the middle there. But you as a presenter will see those notes to yourself in the monitor to yourself as you're working through your presentation. Uh, to enter a presenter mode, if you look over to the top right-hand corner there, you can see the share button, which works exactly the same as Google Docs, the comments button that works exactly the same as Google Docs, and then uh, the present button. Uh, that it kind of goes to a full screen mode presenter. If you click the little drop down off to the side, you have different options for presentation modes, like the full slides or um, that presenter mode we were just talking about. Okay, uh, so again, much of the functionality is the exact same as Google Docs, but you have a few other options here. You can insert like a text box, as you can see from the toolbar. You can insert images the same way as you would in Google Docs. Uh, you can add in shapes or lines. Um, like I said, I've already mentioned how you can share, use commenting, very similar to how you did. If you click on a background, you can change around the coloring and the formatting. And the nice thing about slides here, too, is if you start with one theme and make some changes to it, and then you decide you want to change your theme, you can just click on theme, switch over to new one, and all your content you've already built comes over with you. 
They also have different layout options that are built in with each slide. So I'll across the toolbar there, if you can see where I clicked on layout, I have a variety of slide options here that are defaulted in. It's just different ways for you to share information, share text, or build your presentation different ways. So you can choose individual layouts there for each individual slide within the, the content you've chosen. Uh, you also have the options here for transitions or animations. So that's again across the toolbar there beside layout and theme. You click on transition, you get a variety of options here. You can click the drop down box and do things like fade or having sling slide in or do animations with text either by specific slides or on every individual slide as you transition between the two of them. So again, very similar to PowerPoint or Keynote. Yep. Uh, and then we looked at inserting content through Google Docs and just a few other additions I want to highlight here. Within a uh, Google slide, you can also add a video into an access YouTube right away. And as students or yourself work through slide, you can embed the little videos right into your presentation. And you can also add in word art here along with everything else we've talked about. Um, and then just want to click on the file here and different ways to share. And this is also true for Google Docs. So it kind of doesn't get used often there, but it's very popular for slides. So if you click on file, you have the option to download apps. And this is true for slides and docs. So you can take a Google Doc or slide and turn it into a PowerPoint or a Microsoft Word file. You can change it, turn it into a PDF or a variety of other things as you can see there. You also have the option to publish to the web. When you do that, it gives you a unique link to it, which will just show in the presentation mode. It will not get, have the toolbar or the editing mode if you're sharing it as like a can edit or a can comment. Publishing to the web just shows the full content version, nothing else. There's no editing tools tied to it. Um, it's a nice way to share it with people outside of your classroom organization if you're not sharing it as an editable document. Okay, uh, we are right at nine o'clock right now. So instead of playing this video here and have, have, you know, have to stick around for this, uh, Mally has just posted a link off to the side. If you want to take the time and go and watch through it, you are more than welcome to. If you want to leave it for another time, you can just take the link out of here and copy and paste it somewhere and save it for another time. Uh, but basically just demonstrates everything I just showed you through the presentation here. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for sticking around. Uh, I am happy to stick around for a while to answer any questions you have. And as I said earlier tonight, I really, truly am happy to connect with other teachers at any point in time and kind of detail sort of things in education and technology in the classroom, which is a very much a passion for me. So uh, there's a couple ways you can connect with me by email or Google Plus, or uh, I'm on Twitter and I'm happy to reach out to people there. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, and I'm going to pass this over to um, Siri and I. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, thank you for a very informative and useful session. It makes me wish I was back in the classroom. Um, I would like to thank each of you for giving of your time to participate in tonight's webinar. I hope that, that you will be able to use Andrew's ideas in your classroom practice. I know that Andrew covered a lot of information with us tonight. And since this session uh, was recorded, you can go back and review the session and watch the videos at your leisure. You'll be sent an email uh, tomorrow with links to the recorded session and all the resources. At this time, I would like to encourage you to take a few minutes and fill out the exit survey. Uh, the link is right there in the middle of the slide. Uh, we do use your feedback and uh, read it carefully and uh, try to um, listen to your suggestions to improve our program as best we can. Uh, for example, many have asked if we could provide certificates of participation in OTF Connects. So I'm happy to announce for, um, to all of you that uh, this year you will receive a certificate of participation. All you'll need to do is fill out the exit survey, and once you submit your survey, you'll be prompted to create a certificate, uh, which you can save as a PDF and print for your use. Uh, do use the link at the bottom of the screen to check out upcoming sessions. Um, we actually just have one more session for our fall program, and that's uh, tomorrow night on coding with Brian Aspinall. Um, it's it's going to be an exciting uh, session, so uh, please uh, join us and uh, pass that information on to your colleagues and encourage them to, to join us with OTF Connects. We're in the midst of preparing and planning the winter spring program, which will begin at the beginning of January, uh, so you will get email notification when registration for that program will be um, uh, will be opening. 
I would like to thank Mally for all her work in supporting us tonight. And um, thank you all again, and have a good night.